Does Pal World have what it takes to capitalize on its shocking entry into the video game scene? Or is it just going to be a insane flash in the pan and really let everyone down? Let's have a quick conversation about that. It's been a long time, but if you've been following since the Overwatch 2 days, you know when I'm passionate about something, I could speak freely and nonstop about it. That's why I did a lot of rants for Overwatch 2, because I want to see better things for that game, and it never happened. So that game's dead. I lost the passion for it. But Pal World is here, and I haven't been this passionate about a game in a long time. So I'm going to use my old gift of gab. I'm going to yap your ears off. And today we're going to be talking about what it's going to take for Power World to be the next juggernaut, to be the next Fortnite, PUBG, Minecraft, what it will take to capitalize on what they've done right off the gate. So sit back and let's just get right into this. First off, the massively sized elephant in the room is it takes a lot to be the next Fortnite or Minecraft or Grand Theft Auto juggernaut. It just takes so much. I would say you have exactly a 0.001% chance of that happening, but Power World does have an advantage when it came out nobody was looking for something like this. It's so interesting and creative and unique and new in the fact that it's taken from other games to make something great. It's taken from Breath of the Wild, Ark, Pokemon to make this awesome experience that you can get all those things, all the best things put right there and play them right there. That's something that I think a lot of gamers didn't know they really wanted. And then when it happened, 2 million people showed up to show their support for it. Now that is amazing. That is an advantage that Power World has that nobody else has. It's kind of similar to how PUBG did it. PUBG came out of nowhere with this new concept. Essentially, adding all these things has created a new concept in its own way. It's a combination of shit that no one was expecting. Even saying that, it's going to take a lot for them to be able to maintain a million plus players. I mean, Counter-Strike struggles with that. Granted, across all platforms, Xbox, PC right now, eventually when it comes to Switch and maybe PlayStation, they should be able to keep over a million. You don't just invest $30 and then completely ruin the game. That would take a lot of effort to just sink this game. But to see a million plus per platform is going to take a miracle. No matter what, it's such a rarity, okay? As an example, the way Fortnite does it is they keep things fresh. They're always adding new stuff. Power World is going to have to do that. Now, they have shown with Craftopia that they are very, very capable of doing that. Craftopia added a bunch of stuff over time, and that game has a lot in it. If you want an idea of what Power World came from, or what Power World might do eventually, check out Craftopia. It was a good game. It's a very fun game. It's a little bit more rough. They really refined it when they made Power World, but this isn't the first time they've tried something like this. A lot of the times when these big games come out, they hit you really hard and fast with some predatory ass microtransactions. I don't think we'll have to worry about that with Power World, at least not right away. They're a humble development team. There's just a, like a group of people, a small group of people. That's why they're struggling to get everything going right away. And we have to be patient with them. Okay. These guys hit the guy. Jazz play with a ball. He's so cute. These guys hit the absolute lottery with video games. But like I said, there's a $30 price tag going in. Obviously, that lessens the chance of microtransactions, but there are games out there that don't give a fuck about that. I mean, look at Dead by Daylight. They're ridiculous prices for DLCs that barely add anything to the game, one or two characters, and then sometimes the microtransactions are just like a dress for $10, okay? So paid games can still fuck you. Just remember that. Obviously, the biggest issue that needs fixed right away before people will truly be able to give themselves to the experience that is Power World is the servers, especially the dedicated servers, and especially the crashes on Xbox, because dedicated servers are having what they're called a memory leak and it is causing problems for everyone it doesn't matter what your server is you will crash multiple times a day they're very aware of it they've mentioned it they're working on a fix we got to give them a little time now i gotta say you get a couple of weeks maybe a month if you're incredibly lucky that's your grace period we all know you're a small dev team but you've just made buco bucks you became millionaires overnight at some point people are going to expect you to throw money at this and keep this going because you just gave a large group of people their favorite game for some maybe that they've ever fucking played play. So you get a bit of a grace period and obviously everybody's being patient now, but I give it till next week before we start getting a lot of detractors that are saying it's just not worth it. Maybe I'll come back. There's always a chance that they will, but there's also a chance that they just don't. There's other games that will jump on it. I do have faith they will fix the server issues. I think this is something that is doable. It, they're going to have to throw some money at it, but they have more money now than they ever thought they ever could. If you are having issues playing multiplayer or even single player, if you're on Xbox or dedicated servers on Steam, there are a few tips to help you circumnavigate the issues like crashing, and frames and lagging and everything. First off, ignore the dungeons, especially if you're having especially bad problems. Don't go to the dungeons. They will they will damn you and ruin your existence. Secondly, don't cram things in your bases. If you cram too many entities in one area or too many buildings and structures and farms too close to each other, I've noticed that can increase the rate of crashes as well. Also, I've seen the shiny Pokemon and some of the boss Pokemon that you can use through exploits to get that will do some funky stuff while inside of those villages. Be very careful with that. I feel like maybe that could fuck 
fuck up something somewhere. I don't know. It just looks a little weird. So I've seen them like freaking out, flipping around, and just having an like a I don't know what to call it. It's like a virtual seizure. This next bit's only for my Shockbite homies out there. Anybody that's running their server through Shockbite, this is gonna sound annoying, but we were having crashes every three minutes, thirty seconds, five minutes, ten minutes. We did this for multiple days. We put up with that for multiple days, and eventually we had to come together and increase the plan, which has helped to some extent. Now we're crashing every hour to two hours somewhere in that time frame. I don't know if it's doing better now or if it'll do better during primetime hours. Shockbite might be doing something a little scummy. They don't show you the megabytes of memory or RAM that you're getting when you buy the server. You just can see it after and you can upgrade through there. I don't remember seeing any kind of verbiage. I did look for it. I couldn't find any language that was telling me how many gigabytes I was getting for my RAM or my memory or whatever you want to call it, like any of that. I didn't see any information on that. But once we did upgrade it, it did help, which is just annoying to say. Another quick thing, if you're having a lot of frame rate issues, just restart your game. Just restart your game. That could fix your frame rate issues. Sometimes you just have to return the title, but sometimes you have to do a full restart of your game, especially if you get input locked and you can no longer control anything with the game, then you really have to restart your game. You're going to have to like tab out and close and force close and all that bullshit. This doesn't have as much to do with Power World's success, but rather the view that some people have of its success. With every good thing in gaming or in life, there are going to be people that want to shit all over it for one reason or another, whether they're Nintendo shills, whether they don't have it so they have to hate it, or they just don't like it. Instead of just saying it's not for them, they have to shit all over it, which is really unfortunate that people can have that mindset. Ultimately, you're entitled to your opinion and you can act how you want to act, but some of the shit they're saying is absolutely stupid. It's brain dead. It's hilarious. It's insane. And it's not even just the people. Some of it's coming from Nintendo. That's right. Nintendo released a statement and it's fucking pathetic. They're saying they're looking into Power World. You don't need to look into it. It's obviously not a Pokemon clone. Okay. It's technically inspired by Pokemon and we all call it a Pokemon clone as a joke, but it is 100% without a doubt, not a clone of Pokemon. It is built from the ground up, all specifically designed and created. And yeah, some people are saying there might be some AI used. Well, guess what? There's AI used everywhere. I don't see any instances of AI anyways, but some people are guessing that. They all look like very well-crafted, unique designs that a group of people sat down and created. And to accuse it of AI, do your thing. But AI is being used everywhere and you're kind of, you just have to get used to it. Not that I'm like for it or against it. I'm somewhere in the middle. I think it could be used for good things. I think it could be used for bad things, but nonetheless, I don't see any proof of AI anywhere, especially in the designs of things. They all look very unique and specific to what they are. But back to the Nintendo thing, it is flat out pathetic that they have to come on and say something. Now you could see that they're direct competition. Instead of doing that, you could build them up and say Pokemon and Power World can exist in the same universe of gamers. We can all appreciate both of them. But instead you release a statement saying you're going to look into it, which just makes you look scummy, especially because we know you've done scummy things to content creators, other games. You've taken down stuff that was absolute ludicrous bullshit. I don't know. Out of the big three, Microsoft, I guess you want to count Steam. Microsoft, no, don't count Steam. Steam's not even a part of this conversation. Microsoft, Nintendo, and PlayStation. Nintendo is definitely the evilest one of them all. I mean, you still might have to spend $60 to buy Breath of the Wild, despite Tears of the Kingdom coming out and Breath of the Wild being that old. You still might have to spend $60 for it. If they could charge and sell new Nintendo 64 games, they would charge $60 for those. They're fucked up, bro. That's a whole other can of worms. Nintendo has a lot of issues. Finally, somebody is standing up to them in the mainstream scale with Power World and it's succeeding. This is going to teach a lot of people to just take from Nintendo and make great things, use their ideas and expand upon them and get the players more of it. People shouldn't be so opposed to Power World's existence. I get that you want to be a Nintendo shill or whatever your reason is, if you just hate it or whatever, but these adamant oppositions are not great for anybody. I mean, look what that stuff did to Battleborn and Overwatch. Both were great games, yet they went after each other. The fans went after each other. It happened with Halo and Call of Duty back in the day. It doesn't do anything both great franchises can exist in the same world and we can just get more great video games all the time and both can take ideas from each other just good shit comes out of it you don't have to play it you can stick to one side but there's no reason to accuse the other side of doing weird scummy shit with no proof. We should be praising these developers for the things that they've done and the odds they've had to overcome. It's insurmountable. Nobody could have done this but them because it's such a rare instance that we never get to see. We, we rarely get to see this. Sometimes the big boys pull something out. Like I said, the last time I could think of this was PUBG and that was miraculous in its own right and it's gunning for their numbers too. So the next time you want to make some weird ass claim that Nintendo's going to sue just because they put out a statement, maybe think about the dumb shit you're saying because personally when I read it, I think it's hilarious and I love the the memes that are coming out of it, they're great. I can't stop laughing at your 
stupidity, honestly. Because of the dumb shit I've been hearing when I first heard of the statement, I thought it wasn't real. Someone came into chat and said, hey, they released a statement. Nintendo officially released a statement. And I said, no, they didn't. You're just hearing bullshit spouted out into the ether. That means nothing. That's all speculation. Nope, it was real. I couldn't believe it. And it's fueling people to say even more dumb stuff. But seriously, everything is speculation until you hear from the person's mouth. I have a long list of history in video games. I've been playing them since I was a baby. I've been creating content, especially on YouTube, for over 15 years. Okay, I love video games. I used to make video games. I was a game tester for like three years, worked on multiple Microsoft projects, and I've seen the best and the worst that a company can do. What we got here is a fucking amazing game, and I cannot wait to keep making more content on it, and I would love to keep speaking passionately about it and doing these rants in a positive way, because I don't have anything outwardly negative I could say about Power World right now. I'm in a honeymoon phase. I've noticed some of the issues, but I brushed off really quick, because like I said, it's such a rare instance for this to happen, and we need to praise these devs and we need to build them up and we need to give them good support and I think there was something about death threats or something. That's just so sad. It's so sad and I just wish we could all get along, man. I wish we could all get along and make AK-47s together because that's what Pocket Pisser or Pear Pocket or Pocket Pear, Pocket Pear. Yeah, it sounds like balls. Pocket Pear. There's a lot of sussy stuff in this game. There's some sussy minds. I mean, have you seen number 69, Lovander? That dude's got a heart pussy or like pussy heart hairs, okay? It's really weird and there's, there's a bunch of other stuff. Oh, let me know if you guys want me to do more rants and topics like this. I'd love to do it at least weekly or maybe a couple times a week, depending on what goes on, especially early on right now, because a bunch of stuff keeps coming out. If there's anything specific that I missed that you wish I would have talked about here, leave in the comments. If there's enough, I could do a follow-up video or I could just touch up on it. I'll try to talk about it if you and I think it's important, but if you just want to talk about Love Anders, pubic hair. We can do that too. Bye. I don't know, dude. What is this one, dude? <laughs> Leave the multi-billion dollar company alone. He's got one up his ass, bro. Oh, shit. <laughs> the Pokemon company showing the fake Lucario to the judge.